Okay, we are on the air with Charlie Bruno and myself, Sarah Taylor, and we have a really special guest today um, whose name is Kristen DeAngelis, <clears throat> and she'll be joining us shortly, but uh, for the next few minutes, we just want to catch up, see how everyone's doing, what's been going on in your life. Hi, uh, Liam. <laughs> hey, Liam. And um, just so you guys have an idea what's going to happen today is uh, we've got Charlie is going to be chatting with Kristen, as am I. Um, but part of my role will also be to pay attention to the questions that you are asking. So I will, uh, I'll do my best to pay attention to questions. Um, and as I said before, if you want to ask a question, you can either just type it in. But if you also want it to go on to Twitter, which is a really great, great way to let people know that you're here doing this, you just type in forward slash Q and then your question and it'll also go to Twitter. Um, so Charlie, what's yeah. going on? How are you? How was your day? My day was pretty good actually. Um, I made a big massive double batch of juice today, um, an orange juice because I had a bunch of oranges and carrots and apples so I make kind of a sweetie juice which I don't normally do. And then a big green juice, which was just like kitchen sink. I mean, it was anything in my fridge that was green went in this thing. So I haven't tasted it yet. Fantastic. We'll see if I survive. I'll have I'll have Keith grab me one, and I'll probably drink it. There you go. I don't have any juice with me today. I forgot to fill a glass of juice up. Oh, just get some food, just green food coloring, and put it in I'll water. Give me that juice. So when my wife gets home, I'll yell at her. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was a nice day. Fairly relaxing. Uh, What's I didn't the temperature in Canada? I'm in Canada? Yeah. Temperature, how hot was it? It was actually, it was cold this morning. It was, um, well, negative one Celsius, which I think is about 30, about 30 degrees. So it was chilly this morning. Right. First day of spring and it was bloody cold, so. Hi, Liz. What can you do? Liz just jumped in. Hey, Liz. Oh, is that Liz Kogan? That's my friend. There you go. Liz Kogan, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Liz, this is my friend Charlie. Charlie. Hi, there. Liz. How are you? <laughs> and uh, so tell me about your day, Charlie. What'd you get up to? Um, 90 degrees here today. I went and ran stairs for about an hour. Um, been running around Costco, doing all the stuff that you need to do to keep things moving forward. Absolutely. With a new week coming up, getting ready for this, being excited about doing a blab and getting to see all these people and yeah. um, answer their questions. And I'm excited to have Kristen on. And didn't, now didn't Sundays used to be a day of rest? Do you think anybody really rests anymore? Well, you, you know what? It's a big day Tuesday for me. Big day Tuesday for me. What's that? I have not missed a workout in two years on Tuesday. Wow. Yep. Are you going to rest all day to, to uh, celebrate? No, I'm going to probably work out even harder. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Um, who came in? Let's see. Tori. Tori Hi, Tori. Awesome. How are you? Thank you, everybody who's been sharing this on Facebook and on Twitter and telling all your friends about this blab. This is going to be fantastic. We've got somebody waiting in the wings. And uh, what do you say, Charlie? Should we bring her in? I think we bring her in. The, the most amazing person I've met in the last year. She's incredible. She's full of energy. She's a good soul. And she's going to answer your questions, and she's going to delight everybody tonight. No pressure, Kristen. Come on in, Kristen. Okay. So we'll get Kristen here, and she'll be in our uh, our vacant seat. And we are waiting now. There we go. Ding. Doing an amazing yoga move. Hey! Hi. Hey, Kristen. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, guys, for having me. And how are you, my dear? This is really cool. It's a fun way to connect with everyone. And uh, thanks everyone for joining tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Well, in. we should probably formally introduce you, shouldn't we? Now you've got this wonderful bio that I'm going to just sort of paraphrase from. Um, <laughs> and I uh, basically, Kristen D'Angelo, she's a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and a passionate leader in the field of health and wellness. Um, so she got her, now it says her BS. I'm sorry. Is this called bachelor, BA? Uh, bachelor of Science. Oh, the BS is actually real. It's not BS. <laughs> oh, it's real. Well, 
And this is a horse, not a pony. pony. You Did you miss the whole pony and the horse thing? Okay. Kristen received her Bachelor of Science from Virginia Tech in Dietetics and Exercise and Health Promotion. And she actually began her career right out of the gate as the... Yeah, it's actually my first, first job out of the, out of the gate. Yeah. yeah, well, the sun was shining on you that day, that's for sure. We're glad to hear about that. You became the personal nutritionist for Joe Cross, the producer, director, and star, oh, who was the producer, director, and star of Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. A lot of us know that. Now, what I also heard you mention in another interview, because I've been basically stalking you online for a few days, is that you were his nutritionist, you were his personal assistant, you trained him in yoga, yep. and yep. Uh, so, yeah, you, you, you really worked closely with Joe, and that's fantastic. But then something happened, and um, you made some choices in your life, which we'll talk about. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, you're counseling individuals and groups in adult weight management at Tri Health Medical Fitness Pavilion, Tri Health mm -hmm. Women's Center, and the University of Cincinnati. You're a registered yoga teacher and a certified ACE personal trainer in the Cincinnati area. And you have also just published a comprehensive What Juicers Eat meal plan and recipe book for people who have been juicing and want to actually eat solid food again, like the big boys. <laughs> so, um, Kristen enjoys traveling, practicing yoga, visiting her family in Boston, Massachusetts, and currently is training for her very first marathon. Yep. <laughs> so, we are so happy to have you here. And one of the first things um, I would like to say is that this is, this is very exciting for me. I know Charlie has met you. I haven't met you, and I sort of feel like I'm meeting you now. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say uh, I've gone through your Instagram from day one <laughs> to as recently as yesterday, and um, I, I'm just blown away by the images you share. And uh, you've got some pretty interesting stuff you've done, so we're going to ask you questions about that. Sure, I'm excited. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that wonderful bio and background. I'm really excited to be here and uh, chat with you guys all. Can you hear me okay? Is get a, get a little feedback. A little feedback. Should I? Put, I brought my brought headphones. So my headphones. Yeah, it's, it's clipping because of the phone. Okay, let me try. This is my first official blab. So no, this is only our fourth official blab. <laughs> Now, who is, who is Courtney? All right, Angela? let's see. Is that a little bit better? That's much better. One question. Who is Courtney DeAngelis? Courtney? Courtney? Yeah, is that oh, related to you? Sister. Yeah. Yay. Hi, sister. <laughs> Fantastic. She's back in Boston right now, so I have a family all over. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you guys today from Cincinnati, and I was up in Chicago over the weekend, so... Good to, good to yeah, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Boston. Okay. So you're potentially a Red Sox fan. Uh, big Red Sox fan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, well, we can it, have baseball wars later. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. So, Sarah, you want to start? Sure. Absolutely. Um, so, Kristen, I just I, I made a few notes here. I, I One of the things I said to Charlie is I don't want to have an interview with you that's your sort of typical, all the same questions. Um, I know that the people in our audience have questions they want to ask you, and I'd like to leave sort of 10 minutes but at the end of this. We're going we're gonna to go an hour. We want to respect everybody's time. So if, uh, if we can, at sort of 10 to 9, we're going to open it up to the people in the, the group. But definitely, if you have a question, ask it. Ask it on Twitter or just in the group. Um, so... You've had an exciting life, and you've worked with some exciting people, and you've done a lot of traveling. But I guess the question is, what is your greatest passion in life? So, so I, I, when I read, you, you sent me a couple of these questions that you were thinking of asking me. And when I really think about the broad umbrella of what do I just love, like no matter what, I just love to help people, like at the most basic fundamental level. Um, whether it's just make them feel confident or happy or just make them like bring a smile to their face, um, whether it's help them build their nutrition status, whether it's help them get on their feet and moving, um, whether it is bringing a practice of 
compassion and gratitude uh, towards their self, which, you know, we're so cr- self-critical and I'm one to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, same as everyone else. But I really want to just kind of help people, um, whatever that might be. So that's really what I'm passionate about and passionate about sharing what I know. And I'm just so curious about the world and learning and whatever I learn, um, really, it's important that we all share what we what we know. And you know, there's no, the student and the teacher cannot be, I can't be a student without a teacher. I can't be a, a yoga teacher without my students. Mm-hmm. Really, that combination is just sharing. So, um, yeah, I just really would like to share what I know and learn from everyone else. And I'm passionate about kind of that that whole combination of how it all works and how I can help people. Have you? So. And you know, you know what's funny, mm-hmm. Kristen? When I met you, you gave me a big hug that night, the first night I met you, <laughs> yeah, after I, I told you what I, I still remember that. And I was like, <laughs> You didn't know. You didn't know if I smelled or anything. You just gave me a big old hug. You just care. You care, and it's it comes out. And I've I've got to meet you in person, so it just comes out. And I, I appreciate it. I love the fact that you're doing what you're doing. And I hope that I can support that in any way. I know Sarah feels the same way. Absolutely. Yeah, we. Um, I mean, one of the things that uh, Carly has been doing is the what juicers eat. The, the food plan that, that you yes yes and um, so we might as well talk about that um, I guess how did that how did that come about and um, what really was the what was the focus what was the impetus of that plan and and I guess the other question the two part of uh, the second part of this question is how do you help people make that transition to to food only without the typical oh my god you know i had extra slices of bread and i'm just going to go down this path i mean i've i've been down that road so many times of losing weight on a yeah. fast and then gaining a chunk of it back yeah good really excellent questions and i think that um basically that fundamental question of how do i transition or how do i keep the weight off i mean losing weight it's challenging i know that but really the hardest part is keeping it off understanding okay i did this really specific or rigid plan i knew exactly what to do but now when you're thrown out in the real world like how do you react and respond to environmental triggers our personal internal triggers and and how do you deal with that because with juice it's really a binary decision it's yes or no and with food it can be very comprehensive and and pretty much nowadays it's like anyone is your nutritionist right um, because as a nutritionist, you don't really need a specific degree or um, certification. A registered dietitian nutritionist, uh, which is what I am, is really based on evidence-based medicine. It's based in clinical um, foundation in our training. Um, it requires a lot of training, sitting for a national exam and continuing with uh, continual education. So there's a lot that goes behind that. And so with this common question that I've received from my clients, I received all the time when I was on tour with Joe for his um, film tour, for his book tour. Um, I met Charlie along the way, like you already mentioned. And that was just such a reoccurring question. No matter where I sat and who I met within the juicing industry is, well, I lost all this weight, but I'm gaining it back. I'm scared. I'm nervous to eat, um, you know, coming right out of a juice fast. So I really wanted to, again, share what I know and just I really want to bring that uh, to a plan that someone feels is comprehensive. It's The meal plan is not just, it's a seven day meal plan, but it's also 60 different recipes. And it's a how to guide, a practical guide for exactly what to do, how to transition into a juice fast, how to transition out of a juice fast, and how to just maintain your weight at that kind of optimal level that works for you. Um, And there's, you know, some specific things that you need to do and you need to be aware of, you know, some foods basically when we we do a juice fast it's almost like an elimination diet and it puts our our gut and our body in this perfect place that we can see okay how does my body react when i introduce all these new foods Mm -hmm. now if we dump all of these new foods in at one time there could be you know flames there could be a disruption um, that we don't quite know so bringing in specific foods at specific times as you transition out of your juice fast 
um, helps to uh, ease ease you out a little bit better, um, as well as use it kind of as a means to say, okay, do I feel a little bloated when I've added beans or lentils, you know, or or do I feel, you know, that dairy is not going to be my best friend, right? So there's a few of those things that you can use the meal plan as a way to identify um, different foods that might be problematic for you now that you've kind of pl placed yourself at that perfect baseline to say, okay, now that I'm introducing foods. But um, on the flip side of that also, there's a specific way that you want to start adding foods to just gently bring your body back into the world of solids because we've been just uh, – really having liquid nutrition for the past, whether it be three, five, 10, 30 days, whatever it is. So um, really, again, the, the What Juicers Eat meal plan is the name of that, whatjuicerseat.com is where you can find it. Um, and it, it really stemmed from the demand that I found in all of these different locations, um, people that I met, and then also the Juicing Radio website. So What Juicers Eat is a stem from Juicing Radio, a podcast. So if you guys don't know about it yet, um, you can tune in. I think, did you do an interview with Shane the other day? I did. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of where it stemmed from and hopefully what it can provide for anyone interested. And Charlie did, right. Charlie did a little bit of, we provided you with the meal plan. And I know that you you checked out some of the recipes, and I don't know if you wanted to kind of share your experience with that. It was it was incredible, and it made things easy for me as I came back after 300 days. And Kristen was very concerned about me going for 300 days. That's a great picture of Kristen on a rock. <laughs> that's what I've been. Um, that's why I haven't been looking. I haven't <laughs> found that's, that's amazing. Um, no, it, you know you're right. One of the things I realized during my 300 days, Kristen was I couldn't drink orange juice anymore. I hadn't been able to drink the orange juice for the last 20 years without getting extraordinary heartburn. It wasn't the orange juice. It was all the combined concoctions that I was bringing into my body mm. that was causing acid reflux. Right. And what you just said a minute ago about how if you take it one at a time, when you start to come back from a reboot, whether it's five days, 10 days, 60 days, 300 days, you take your time and see what the food does. And I always tell my son, I'm not, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian, but I say, Take an inventory of how you feel when you eat something that's suspect. Mm -hmm. Then you know if you want to bring that back into your body again. And you you give me a lot to look at. And what the juicers eat meal plan did for me, it helped me get to a point where I really can appreciate food and use it as fuel and still have enjoyment with it. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. There's a ton of really amazing recipes, and I have a ton of uh, clients, friends, family members that have used it just solely to use the recipes. You know, they aren't necessarily, they haven't done extended juice fast or anything like that, but they just, you know, want to have a plant-based meal plan. And this meal plan is completely 100% um, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, uh, all plant-based, so you're completely just eating plants. If you want to eventually introduce some animal-based foods, um, there's su some suggestions there. But uh, it's kind of that baseline for you to come out and feel comfortable and okay coming into the world of solid foods again. So, A question off the beaten path. How do, do you eat meat at all? I do. You know, it's really funny because I'm one of those people that I've, I've kind of just dabbled in trying different things like that. And... Uh, you know, vegetarian, vegan, paleo, you, you kind of, you're just interested in it, right? I'm a dietitian. Right. You read about the different books and the different diets. Um, I just, I just find that I really function more optimally. Uh, my folate and B vitamin, you know, my iron, some of those functions. I'm, I work out pretty hard and intense and, you know, currently training for a marathon and you can do all of that plant-based and vegetarian, vegan. Some people just feel that, you know, and it's not a ton of meat, but probably like three ounces of chicken every every few days or something like that, but nothing crazy. Um, and I, I love fish. I grew up in Boston, so, man, I, I do love my fish, shellfish, anything like that when I can get it. <laughs> That's awesome. What marathon What marathon are you running? So this is this is probably the first time that I'm, I'm making – I'm coming out, making it public, <laughs> okay? Because people think – it's kind of like they think I'm vegetarian or vegan – they also see me run all the time and they think I've done a, a marathon and I never have. And it's because, and we'll probably touch on this, but uh, knowing it versus doing it, Kivdi is a saying that Joe says. And Joe also says, like, 
practicing loving yourself and not trying to be perfect. And I, for so long, was nervous that I won't be able to run an 8.30 minute mile and I was going to be so mad at myself if I couldn't do that. And you know what? That's fine. I, I want to just, I want to, I want to run. I, I love running. I want to challenge my body, my mind. Um, so I'm doing the Flying Pig Marathon in Cincinnati on May 1st, right. which is coming up. All right. Yeah, I'm really excited, really excited. Just, it was nervous to take the plunge and be like, no, I'm going to do it. So I never told anyone. I was just kind of training on the side, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, so. So, so. so what year were you born, Kristen? 89. I'm, I'm still an 80s baby. <laughs> so I ran my first marathon in 84 before you were even born. Did you really? I did not know you ran a marathon. I've run five. What was it? I've run five marathons. The last one I ran was in 95. It was the only full Disneyland marathon they had, and I ran it at 280 pounds. Oh, my goodness. Do you want to join me? Yeah. You're going to come to Cincinnati now? <laughs> Actually, I, I'm i not committed to this yet, but I'm probably going to do a marathon in the next um, year. Wow. That is, wow, that's amazing. First. <laughs> well, might as well do one. I haven't done one since 95. I might as well step up. Well, Charlie, we're recording this, so you're <laughs> You're stuck now. <laughs> All right. I'm running a marathon sometime in 2016. Fantastic. Everybody. Fantastic. <laughs> no, but I, I wish I could come to Cincinnati and run it with you. It'd be fun. Well, it's a door is always open. Door is always open. You, you, and you wouldn't have to run with me because I wouldn't be able to keep your pace. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. You have a running partner? Are you running with somebody or no? No, it's kind of funny. That's the other thing. I, I don't really like running with people. I like it to be my time. <laughs> my boyfriend is so sweet. And he's like, let's, we can, we can run together. I'm like, I really want to just listen to my podcast and just kind of tune in. Well, it's like working out. I like working out. I have, I work out with clients and I, yep. I do cardio with the clients. I don't just stand there and talk to them. Yeah. And, but I have to go back and do my own workout because I want my, that's my solitude. Yeah, it's like your that's, time. I love group, group classes. That's all. I love, love, love. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so there's something about just having that time to yourself. Yeah. Right. I, I Absolutely. swim. And for me, an hour in the pool by myself, swimming is just mm -hmm. love it. Absolute heaven. So I That is the one thing I wish I could do. I've heard it's just so meditative. My sister does it. You know, I, I can't get into it, but it's on my to-do list. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, I have to say, I mean, sometimes I feel like the old lady in the pool because I, I do about half of it with, you know, swim strokes and the other half, I just, I have a flutter board and I just do oh, yeah. kicking. So yeah. you can waste a hell of a lot of time just kicking with a flutter board back and forth and then whip kick and then scissor kick and then it's, it's really great. It's really great. That's awesome. Hi, Kelly. So, yeah. um, so real quick, well, does anybody have any questions? I haven't seen any questions come up no, for Kristen. You know what, guys? Write, knows, write, your questions. write your questions, and we'll definitely address them in the last 10 minutes. So at 10 to 9, we're going to absolutely open it up to questions people have. I've still got a few questions, um, you know, on the list that I want to run past. Them. I want to hear. I want to hear what you're going to ask her about yoga. Well, I mean, that's why I put up this picture. Now I'm pointing here, but it's probably here because I saw. It. That's right. Yeah. It's there. You're right. Anyway. Um, anyway, there's, there's a picture somewhere on the screen and I pulled this picture up and I went, actually, I was scrolling through your Instagram lurking as they call it. Um, and I was like, holy crap. I showed it to my husband. I said, look at this. I can do that. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Well, how old is she? I said, I don't know. She's like 25. <laughs> and then he goes, wait. Where's your other leg? <laughs> He's like looking at it really closely. So if you look at that picture closely, or find Kristen's Instagram and scroll down 69 weeks past, um, you were at Zion's National Park. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Climbed up, and, and you've got a lot of pictures like this where you've climbed up in bizarre places, or there's another one when you're, you're in an airport and you did a time lapse video. Oh, yeah, that was a cool one. And um, anyway, there's some pretty amazing pictures, and you obviously are very talented in yoga. So I would personally like to know about your yoga training, and yeah. um, right. and what are some of your favorite poses? Like you even did a pose 
Uh, an Instagram <laughs> pose, or Angela, you're like, I don't even know what this one is called because your like legs were all <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So talk to me about yoga and how does it, how do, how does yoga work for you? I mean, I'm a I'm a big fan of yoga and we do it. My husband and I do it together actually. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'd love to well, know. Thanks for that question. Um, it's definitely something that I bring into my practice as I work with clients as well. Um, because really what, what yoga comes down to is the asana or the physical practice. So like these crazy postures. Um, a lot of people say, well, I can't do yoga. I can't even touch my toes. Well, um, the actual physical part is just one of the eight basic rules, the overarching things that... Um, create what yoga is, what the definition is. And some of those other principles, so again, the posture is just one, but the other parts of yoga are pranayama, breath practice, uh, withdrawal of senses, pratyahara, meditation, um, with this end goal of reaching samadhi, which is a union and a connection of our spirit with all of these other spirits uh, in, in the world, living, non-living, everything. So, you know, I, I came to yoga with, I was a dancer, I was a cheerleader, so it naturally had, you know, this more, probably a higher flexibility than most. Mm -hmm. um, so I came for the physical practice. Uh, but what I really found is so much of a deeper connection with, with like myself, my soul, an awareness. Um, and that's really what meditation is, like an intentional awareness of yourself and your thoughts. And it's not easy. It's totally not easy. Um, getting rid of the external stuff is one of the hardest parts. Yes, you know, absolutely. You go into a yoga practice and they say, forget what happened a year ago, a week ago, an hour ago, a minute ago, and, and just completely be in present to the moment. And I can do it for short spurts of time, but then before you know it, you're like, oh, I've got to do that thing. And did I do yeah. that? Yeah. And I think the best thing that we can do, Sarah, is try not be judgmental of that. Like the, the more that we practice, it's always a practice. No one's perfect and you already said that. Um, but the more we can practice these things, hopefully the longer amount of time we can go. So if we can only last five seconds, maybe then we can last 10 seconds with just being completely present and just filling up your soul. Like, so if you say, you know, if you're watching a funny show and all of a sudden something makes you laugh and you're just totally in that, or say you are doing a physical pose and it's so hard and that's all you can think about, how much I don't like this and it's so hard, but you're totally focused on that moment, right? You're not thinking about anything else. Yes. So but if, if we can last a little bit longer, like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe we can go a minute of just mm -hmm. really being totally present. And that's what I try to bring into my practice with my clients and uh, whatever it is, you could you could do it with your children, you know, anything to try and um, just be aware of your thoughts and being present, being grateful, compassionate. Um, so mindful eating, applying, applying mindfulness and meditation to, you know, eating, walking, driving. There's so many things that we can apply this mindfulness technique to. So um, it's pretty powerful when you kind of apply it in these other areas of your life. So, yes. yeah. So what yeah. are some of your favorite moves or poses? Okay. poses? Yeah. So, so this is a good one. So. You, want, you want for us? <laughs> you want me to do No, I don't know. That's kind of. Yeah. Come on. What I, no, you could do it. Come on. You could do it. I know you can. Just back maybe up. Another, maybe another blab and then she can be set up. For if that. you do it, I'll do it. Whatever you do, I'll match it. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll do a challenge next time. Next time. Okay. Um, so. Let's see. So my favorite pose, I guess I have a couple. Um, I'm, the cheater way version would be um, Shavasana because you're laying down. Corpse pose. Yes, I know. Whose isn't it? Like for anyone that is listening, hasn't done yoga before. The great thing to know is that you can lay down, close your eyes and you're doing yoga for an hour. If you really, if you want that and you need that, go for it. You're doing yoga. <laughs> so um, that's probably one of my favorites. It's at the end of the practice. And it's the time when you close your eyes and you just get to soak up all of the physical practice that you did um, and really just kind of lay there and soak it all in. And it just feels so nice to receive. Yep. Um, and then one of my other favorite ones would be, so dancer pose and then Padahastasana. So Padahastasana is hand feet. So you're 
um, hinging over, so your head is below your heart, and you slide your hands under your feet, and you just relax your head down. And I like it because really all of the nerve endings um, of our body that connect to our organs end either in our hands or our feet. And so I just have this, I don't know, I just love the connection of kind of, it's kind of like this like circle and all the nerve endings right there. Um, so that's Padahasasana. And then dancer pose um, is another one. So if you scroll through my feed, you'll be able to see what one that is. <laughs> huh. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's it's fun. It's a fun, playful practice, the physical the physical aspect of it. So, yeah. Great. Well, you obviously love it. And um, so you, you do teach? How often do you teach? Yes, I do. Um, so I teach in the Cincinnati area. I teach at the Yoga Bars, which is in um, downtown Cincinnati and then also Newport, Kentucky. I teach there twice a week, but sometimes a couple more. Um, and then I teach at University of Cincinnati on Tuesdays and Thursdays also. And then I teach at a new studio that opened up um, – downtown Cincinnati called Cincinnati Mind Body Studio. So I'm teaching about five times a week, but usually a couple more because I usually pick up a few other classes. Um, and I have just, you know, I'm so grateful because I, the past year when I was traveling with Joe, it was an incredible experience. I mean, hands down, just amazing. I learned so much, met some amazing people like Charlie, of course, connecting me to you, Sarah, uh, and to everyone listening. But at the end of the day, you know, I really wanted, I, I missed connecting with a group or a couple different people and sharing that knowledge um, in a way that I could assist them. So um, what I, and so when I came to Cincinnati, I was just really grateful that I was able to find these opportunities to teach. So um, Rachel Roberts, if you're listening, <laughs> she's in Bali right now, so probably not, but she's our uh, owner of the Yoga Bar Studio. Um, and yeah, it's just an amazing practice uh, to share what I know and then also learn from my students. Um, because everyone is different. And so everyone's yoga practice is going to be completely different. Yeah. Um, and so just to give like a background of my foundational practice, um, I was trained in 2013 uh, at Seattle, the studio of Iyengar. Um, so Iyengar was uh, BKS Iyengar. He's all foundational yoga practice. And so I really like to come back to that principle. The reason I can contort my body in some of these different positions it's all about the foundation. And so that's with anything, right? Like with our eating principles, with our mindfulness, it's back to the foundation and not trying to, you know, run a marathon if we haven't run a 5K yet. Like being, you know, starting with the baseline and stacking it up. Um, so building a foundation, that's what I try to build with my students in my practice. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just got back from India um, in, I was there August, September, and a little bit of October for a vinyasa and hatha training. So, yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you what does vinyasa that. mean? Vinyasa means uh, a flow, a connection of the, the physical postures and breath. So anytime, and if anyone has any questions, shoot them out. Like if they're unsure about going to a yoga class, um, there is a yoga for everyone, and there is definitely yoga classes that are not for everyone. Uh, vinyasa will be a little bit more of like a flow, a connection um, between one pose to the next. So it'll probably be a little bit more faster paced. Um, and yeah, if you have questions about, about any of those, cause there's certain like, you know, uh, sun salutations for different things. Charlie, question. <laughs> you over there. <laughs> You're the teacher. I'm going to ask. Um, so let's say there's somebody that's, um, overweight, a hundred pounds overweight. Yep. What do you recommend? What kind of exercises could they do from a breathing aspect? Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, I think that even deep breath is taking deep breath deep breaths is important. It's an exercise because it's working your lungs, right? Absolutely. Would you concur? Absolutely. So what, what would you recommend to somebody that was 140 pounds overweight? So the When I was 140 pounds, what could I have done? So the first thing, and I did this at Camp Reboot. For some of you listening, if you follow um, Reboot with Joe, and again, their website is great, rebootwithjoe.com. Um, but they have a camp every summer. Uh, the past three years they had it. And so I would do chair yoga for a lot of any patients that are overweight, obese, maybe they just have issues with their knees. They're just uncomfortable maybe with their bodies or just any kind of um, issues. So props are your best friend. No matter if you have different conditions or you're the most flexible person in the world, 
props are your best friend always. Um, and that's what Iyengar really promoted. He, he had, he was sick and ailing and he basically cured himself of his disease. Um, and he used props to really help him through his yoga process. So chair yoga would probably be the best uh, thing that I would look for. And so I've like Googled this for, you know, my boyfriend's grandmother, cause she has uh, back, back issues and things like that, but she can't really move around too much. You can sit in your chair and you can still move your arms, sun salutation A, you can come forward, even if it's just relaxing your head over, you can do gentle twists, you know, and, and then if you stand up, yep, obviously uh, some nice shoulder rolls, like there's there's lots of different things that you can do. And just starting to lubricate the joints, yep, hands, pressing them up overhead. There's lots of things that you can do. Cactus arms, like you can just keep on going over and over. I mean. It's, you should see me sitting at a desk at, oh my goodness, I am not good at sitting. <laughs> um, but there's lots of things that you can do with a chair and even against the wall. Standing against the wall, down dog against the wall. You push your hands against the wall, push your hips back. That's down dog against the wall. I do that in my classes all the time. It's great for lengthening the spine, helping with low back issues. Um, so really, like we find ourselves, you know, being in these same positions every single day. And so it's really about lubricating the joints, lubricating the spine, building up that breath, getting a full breath into the lungs, exhale full out. So it's so important. And, and without breath, there is no yoga. We must initiate all movement with breath. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm sorry, Sarah, but, sorry, Sarah, but I got to tell you, what you said what you about, said about props, props. Charlie, wait, 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 Charlie, wait, wait. you've got, um, got uh, feedback. feedback? Kristen, I'm putting my headset on now, too. That too. <laughs> that help. Do I have feedback, too? No? I can, I can hear you. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. How better? Um, I tell my clients all the time, but I like the word props so much better. I say, if you have to use a crutch, use a crutch. When you get injured, you get hurt, you go to the hospital, they give you a pair of crutches, you use them. And it's so poignant what you're saying. And I like the word props because... Mm -hmm. Crutches sometimes insinuate um, weakness. It, it feels props. like without it, you're going to fall. But with a prop, right. it's going to help lift you up. I love it. I, yes. I, I wait, Hold on. Here I go. I'm going to do it right now. Watch. Blow it up. Bam. <laughs> okay. Um, so just watching the time. And um, I guess I know a lot of people here want to want to talk juicing. So – um, I went through your website and I was looking at some of your recipes. Now you've got some great food recipes, which um, I, I'd love to discuss, but I think we may have to have a whole other blab on this. So, but the yeah. one thing you had a cancer fighter juice and yes, yeah. this, this is my personal question to you because this has long been, I love to juice. I'm a big fan of green juice. I'll throw anything green into a juice except for broccoli. Ah, uh, yes. I yes. tried to juice broccoli once. I love, I adore, you give me a big, huge plate of steamed broccoli, I can eat it just like that. I don't need anything on top of it. But mm -hmm. we all know what broccoli smells like when you steam it. It's kind of got the fart thing going on. And I guess for me, I tried to juice it once and it was like, oh, it was like juicing farts. And I'm like, I can't eat that. I can't drink that. That's disgusting. I'm sorry, everybody. She doesn't know when to not say that. I can say farts. <laughs> It's a, listen, if you do yoga, you need to understand. This is Kristen. Is it a horse or a pony? It's a pony. Pony pal pokey too. Okay. She doesn't even know no comment. No, I know that. I, I used to watch that cartoon. Okay. All right. Well, good. Then, then you remember the line: He can walk into any book with his pony pal pokey too, right? He can maybe. I, it was a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, back to farts. Um, broccoli. If if anyone can convince me. To make a broccoli juice that's going to taste good, I welcome them. Send me your recipes, and maybe we'll have to do a blab where I actually drink broccoli juice. Because, yeah, tell me about so, it. So, so first thing, the gas forming compounds um, are what is actually so 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 good for your cells. Um, it contains these things called um, sulf sulforaphane is the compound really. These sulfur compounds. So when we think sulfur, we think okay, you know, the hard boiled eggs, the sulfur content, things like that. But um, those broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable. So it's also in the family of 
cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. We think any of those gas forming yeah. foods, right? Um, so yeah, of course, when you are condensing those nutrients down, you're extracting the sulforaphane, you're extracting those sulfur compounds. So you're right. If you were to just purely juice broccoli juice, I would say, I probably don't recommend it. <laughs> um, so, so it's kind of about building up the tolerance. So just do, you know, like one, you know how it comes with three of the stalks. If you purchase a, a broccoli, you know, in its whole form, do, yeah. you know, one stock or half a stock. Don't do a whole bunch all at once. Just do a little bit. And that's with any, you know, any fruit or vegetable. If you don't like beets, do a little sliver and then put it into your favorite juice or something like that. So um, what I did is that I added it uh, with cucumber because cucumber produces a lot of juice. So I did, I think, one stalk of, of broccoli, two cucumbers because you're going to get a lot of juice, a lot of volume. I did two apples, uh, one or two lemon. And then there may have been or an orange or carrot in there. Um, so I try to like, you know, add in a few other sweet vegetables or sweet fruits, um, things like that. That way I can kind of hide the the one vegetable that I really want to get in. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe try it with, um, you could even juice a little bit and put it with the orange one that you're talking about with the carrots and apple or, you know, the one that you're making there. So yeah. let me, let me know if you're going to be adventurous. Why is, the, why, is, <laughs> why is the gas so good for our body? Good question. So the sulfur compounds, and this is why the juice, I'm, I should have addressed this when I first said your question. Um, basically, what they do is there's lots of there's lots of free radicals in the body that are formed for a variety of different reasons. But in the day and age that we live in today, there's many environmental toxins. There might be, you know, heavy metals. There might be a lot of different things that are coming in. And even with, you know, the gen genetically modified foods and things like that, there's a lot of stress on our body. And stress also is um, another word for excess free radicals that are running around in the body. So what sulfur-based compounds can help do um, can help to remove some of the excess free radicals. And they're also really helpful for, um, I call this a cancer-fighting juice. The sulfur compounds are extremely helpful for cancer prevention and helpful for people um, in during treatment or in survivorship. They've, research has shown them to help um, uh, make the tumor cells like smaller or to help reduce or inhibit their growth. So it's, it's very helpful when we look at it in, um, you know, the oncology and cancer, <coughs> cancer world. It's, it's incredible. And better raw than cooked in that respect? Better raw. What was it? Is it better raw than cooked in that respect for the cancer properties, cancer uh, stopping properties or whatever? Yes. Yes. If you, um, if you cook them slightly, it can sometimes deactivate some of the enzymes. So that is something to be aware of. If you have, it's, it's fine for anyone except for if you have underlying thyroid conditions, like a hypothyroid or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll be, you'll want to be aware of raw cruciferous vegetables. So just if it's raw, but if you cook it and you have thyroid conditions, it's fine. Um, you'll okay. still get some of those sulfur-based compounds, but it's just going to be a little bit lower. Um, so again, that's only don't have, you don't have to worry if you don't have thyroid conditions. It's fine. Some people are still fine if they do eat it like a little bit raw, but it's just something to be aware of and to talk with your doctor about. Okay. Well, that's good because we've uh, actually got some questions in the lineup about hypothyroidism. One more question: When people, when I started this, you know, four hundred and thirty days ago, whatever it's been. Um, the one thing I noticed that I was craving salt. I was craving it like a lunatic in the first yeah. 28 days. What's it now? What, and what I ended up doing, Kristen, was I would take a little bit of kosher salt and put it in my hand and put it on my tongue and it would calm me down. Mm -hmm. What's is that a good answer to what I was experiencing? Or is there a better thing people could do to get what they need from a salt aspect when they start a juice reboot? 
Yeah, great question, Charlie. Um, this is something that's really important, and that's why I usually recommend um, to add some coconut water, even for some people. Some people need a little bit more sodium in their bloodstream for their electrolyte balance. So salt is not always a bad thing. We actually need it. It's an electrolyte that helps balance out sodium, potassium, calcium. There's some of these minerals that we need in the body. It's just, you know, when we have it in excess. So we're not talking about salt from processed foods. We're talking about natural sodium. Sodium and sodium is found in some fruits and vegetables. So, excellent question. Some things that you could do: um, celery, beets, um, watermelon. They have a little bit of uh, sodium. So, I love you know it, after a post workout, a really awesome you know juice or smoothie. You could do um, celery, beet, carrot, lemon, apple. Like that's a really good one. It's a little bit higher in sugar, so it's going to help replenish the glycogen stores. But also, it naturally has a lot of sodium with the celery. Another post-workout one that I really like is um, a little bit of avocado with some sea salt. So if you want to add a little bit of sea salt, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, because if yeah. you're just juicing, it's going to be significantly lower on the sodium scale. So especially if you haven't done a, an adequate transition. So again, I, I recommend using the what juicers eat meal plan to transition into your juice fast. So you're kind of coming slowly weaning off of uh, the processed foods, the salty foods, and coming more into that plant-based meal plan. Um, but when you're going to just juice, it's very low on the sodium. So sometimes people have some you know, headaches and things like that. So just be aware of that. Coconut water is great. If you wanna add a little bit of uh, you know, Himalayan sea salt or kosher salts to that. Um, and then also the celery and beets uh, can also be some, some good natural electrolyte sodium sources for your juices. Well, thank you. And, and we're getting, Close to time here, Sarah. So we want to get through some of these questions. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I'm okay. For questions. We have a lot of people that have questions, and I think you can scroll back. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can scroll back. So I'm going to. Um, I'll... And Kristen, I hope you're going to be on with us again because I want to talk more about some of this <laughs> stuff in detail. Um, yes. I, excellent. Yes. I think it's important. Really important. So. Absolutely. Um, okay. So I'll ask these questions and. Charlie and Kristen, you guys banter away. Um, and I've also just put up Kristen's website in the spare uh, spot there. So by all means, guys, go and check out her website. Follow her on Twitter. Follow her on Instagram. And um, I hope we haven't... Uh, Don't stalk her, though. Just follow her. <laughs> you know what? It's social media. It's not really stalking because it's all out there. Anyway. <laughs> um, Okay, so here's some uh, some questions we've had. Someone said, "If uh, this is Liam, if you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, are multivitamins and other supplements, for that matter, really necessary?" This is a good one. This is a hot topic because there's so many people out there trying to sell you vitamins that are the best of the best, and oh yeah, multi-level yeah. marketing. And you can ask me what I do when you're done answering the question. Yeah. So that's yeah, a great very question. Good. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I think it's Liam. Thanks for asking the question. And I get this all the time, actually. So to start it off, if anyone has not seen this already, PBS published uh, PBS Frontline on supplements. It is great. It, it really brings to light the fact that supplements in this country are not regulated, basically at all. So <laughs> um, there has to be something pretty wrong with a product that people are getting physically, mentally damaged for the FDA to even look at the product. So just to preface that, um, you have to be a very aware consumer researching your manufacturer, their processes, their practices, that the product contains what it has. It's a, it's a pretty tricky business. So just to preface that, when I think of supplements, it, or, it already kind of makes me a little weary. However, on the flip side of that, supplements can be really, really helpful for some people that might need it. So for someone that, you know, needs a probiotic, they're looking to get their gut back to balance. If they're low, deficient in vitamin D, which is very, very common, a vitamin D supplement could be extremely helpful. So um, supplements can be very helpful uh, for, for people that need it. However, if you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, you're probably getting you know, the recommended requirement for you. If there is an underlying issue with um, absorbing some of those fruits and vegetables, uh, if you're not out in the sun enough, uh, vitamin D, things like that, you know, there could be a deficiency. So that's why I really encourage um, just getting your labs checked. It, it can be a really useful tool. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and what was it? Other, another than some, I think there was one other thing I was going to mention. Um, but yeah, I would say for the most part, you don't really need a multivitamin unless it maybe is something more specific. Uh, maybe it's a vitamin D, maybe it's an iron. Um, but really understanding like the root cause, like if you are deficient in something, why? If you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, um, you're probably getting everything that you need. If there is something wrong there, then maybe there's an issue with your you know, cells or for some reason aren't absorbing it. So what can we do to you know, help kick it back start, you know, kick, kick it back into uh, that place that it's absorbing everything it needs. So for example, you know, um, you need a little bit of fat to absorb some of our vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. You need a little bit of fat. So for some people that are going zero fat, there could be an issue with how to absorb some of those foods. Like I said, for me, um, you know, I, I was vegetarian and vegan for a little while and I started noticing, you know, I'm just always fatigued. I was trying, you know, a B vitamin supplement. I was doing some of those other, obviously plant-based sources. And you know what? I just felt, you know, I'm, I'm going to try a little bit of meat and I felt a whole lot better. So, you know, my body just wasn't absorbing the, the plant-based <laughs> iron. So it really depends, you know, what, what your body is working. And, and that's why nutrition is totally individual. I really try to stress that. But Liam, yeah, I think that if you're eating a mostly plant-based diet, you're probably getting mostly everything you need. But I would always suggest to check with your doctor and check your labs. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Charlie, and then did you want to yeah. add on to that? Sorry. I've never taken supplements in my entire life. And when I have taken vitamins, they always make me feel a little bit off. Now, but I agree with what you're saying. Like my wife has an iron deficiency, so she has to take iron. Um, she can't even give blood. That's how anemic she is. Um, Mm. so if you, yeah, if you just, it goes back to what you said earlier, Kristen, and what I say all the time is take an inventory of how you feel, know how your body feels. You know, if you need more protein, you know, if you need salt, you just got to listen to what's going on in your head and your body's connected. So you go, you know, after I lift heavy for a couple of days, I know I need more proteins Mm -hmm. because my body's rebuilding muscle. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people just, just think, be conscious, be aware. That's what yoga does for you. Well, yeah, what, yeah. I mean, happens. it's like my my last juice fast. You know, I was going for sixty days. I was like, I'm going for sixty days. And day forty five, a spoonful of peanut butter made its way into my mouth. And you know, day forty six, <laughs> another spoonful of peanut butter went into my mouth. And I said, someone's trying to tell me something. And I tell <laughs> you, I just yeah, it was. Uh, I was just craving protein, and I was I was adding yeah. I was adding protein to my juices uh, for the last you know last thirty days of my fast. Um, mm-hmm. pumpkin protein, I think, but it just wasn't, it wasn't enough or maybe I just want a peanut butter. <laughs> it was just an excuse. All right. We got more okay. questions. Yeah. So someone's asking about juicing, juicing with Hashimoto's. Um, mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's she, Stacey. She owns an Island in Ohio. Go ahead. She says she doesn't own it, but that's, yeah, she does. Anyway, um, have read numerous contradicting articles about eating and juicing greens. And so we have eight minutes left and there are more questions. So let's try to keep it as you, we can always reconnect. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks for the question. Very common. Again, asking about any thyroid conditions. Hashimoto's is an attack on the thyroid, basically. So um, I would recommend that you avoid any of the cruciferous greens in your juice. So again, those raw, only if they're raw. If they're slightly cooked or steamed, steamed broccoli, something like that on the side. But you can replace. So if you're doing, you know, a mean green that you typically make with kale, you could sub out the kale with um, spinach or romaine lettuce, any kind of lettuce, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's always an option to uh, sub out. But yeah, it, it's um, there's quite goitrogens that can affect the thyroid and kind of exacerbate the symptoms. So I think there was another question down there for thyroid. But yeah, yeah I would just, you don't have to go nix it like zero, but it's just, you don't want to be eating kale and raw cruciferous vegetables at every meal. Just okay. be aware of it and kind of notice, are you feeling more of the symptoms come up when you're starting to introduce those things. And what you might want to, you know, work with a dietitian too. What is Hashimoto's in a nutshell? Hashimoto's is uh, an autoimmune disorder where basically the body is attacking its own thyroid. And so when that happens, there's a, a deficiency of the thyroid hormone that it releases. And so um, basically thyroid is a master of our metabolism. It converts to um, what's called T3, which is um, 
a hormone in the body that that basically tells everything else what to do and kind of sends the signals and throughout the body. So anything from your metabolism to the temperature to you know all these different metabolic processes. So kind of in a nutshell, it's it's mm-hmm. a, an issue okay. with the thyroid. Mm-hmm. That's okay. fantastic. That's with, a good... with the what users eat meal plan help Stacy with that. <clears throat> Yes, yes. Um, So I go into, for anyone that has a couple different symptoms of um, like thyroid or they're experiencing constipation or diarrhea or, you know, any kind of different things that they might experience on a juice fast or after juice fast, I I have um, all of the tips and different things that you might want to do that would help you. So for thyroid condition, there's going to be substitutions that you can make um, within the recipes provided. So yeah, it can absolutely still help you out. Okay. And then, and Liz also asked about, um, she sort of had a three pronged question. She, um, asked about someone with insulin dependent diabetes and is wondering Mm -hmm. also if hot yoga would be advisable or should she stay away from Hmm. hot yoga? Good question. So, um, uh, impact for someone with insulin dependent diabetes and hypothyroid and, and the juicing impact. Am I on the right, right track to think that I should avoid hot yoga? Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really know if it's like one way or the other. I, I would say that I would definitely recommend to try some of the other practices first initially. Um, oh, I, I come into so many people that say, "Oh, yoga, I can't do that. It's you know way too hot for me." But the hot yoga um, was actually developed by a man that brought it and made it more of a Western approach to the yoga practice, making it very quick at you know 100 degree temperature and so that's not always the best case for a lot of people and so i haven't really seen a correlation with diabetes and blood sugar control but you would be you would want to make sure that your blood sugar is regulated if you're going to take a hot class you want to make sure that you're not you know going uh, hypo really low blood sugar before a class because you know that's not going to be good for the electrolytes and um, blood pressure things like that so I would suggest chart- starting a yoga one or a vinyasa hatha class. A hatha class is also a foundational yoga practice. Um, if you have questions too, Liz, uh, shoot me a message and I can just, you know, go- I do this all the time. People just message me. I can just Google what's in your area and give you a few like boom, 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 simple. Well, you, um, you do that for Bobby. You do it for Bobby yes. Brennan. I know. Yeah, Bobby Brennan. <laughs> He's traveling around the country, and every new city he goes, he goes. I'm in, I'm in uh, Iowa. I'm in Tennessee. Where should I go? <laughs> Isn't so, there an app uh, for that? Been, Come on. Bobby's gonna be on in a couple weeks, <laughs> yeah. Kristen. There, I will say there is apps and stuff like that, but again, with there are so many different kinds of yoga practices that sometimes. So he he texted me and said, "What's restorative yoga?" I said do it. You're going to love it. It's going to help complement your OTF workouts. Um, so it can be kind of uh, interesting to decipher like what different things mean. So if you have a question, shoot me a message, but like a yoga one or a restorative class is going to be more of those calming, soothing, like supportive, more in a, um, a level where you can rebuild and restore. Love him. Okay, so we're down. We're down to about three minutes, Sarah. Yeah. What's another good question? Well, I just answered someone's question. I hope I got it right. He was asking about protein. How much do you add? And I said recommended daily for women is forty-six grams, and men's about fifty-five. Is it or sixty? Yeah. What What you can do actually is um, 0.8 to one gram per kilogram. Oh. So wow. again, I'll repeat that: 0.8 to one gram per kilogram. For some people, it might be a little bit less or a little bit more. If you're working out, um, it could be a little bit more. But that's usually a pretty good baseline that you can start with. Okay. And, and one kilogram, for those of you in the States, one gram, or sorry, one kilogram is equal to 2.2, sorry, 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. I'm sorry. I'll write that in the messages so everyone knows. <laughs> okay. And um, and just one quick thing before be, before we do close up. Um, a lot of people here who haven't been here before, and uh, I'm actually going through and and adding following people on uh, on Blab because it's a great way for me to be able to connect with you and you to be able to connect with me and and Charlie and Kristen as well. Um, yeah. So be sure to if there's people here who've had you know, interesting questions or you want to get to know better. I think most people are happy to, um, to be followed. And I think enough people are here that they're interested in their health and in juicing. And, um, 
I'm and really healthy and nutrition and nutrition and eating healthy Yoga. and just strong. And poking the horse <laughs> and poking and... the horse. Uh, <laughs> so let's do. Uh, well, then, Michelle, let's get to the the last question here tonight. Um, and if you do have any more questions, please reach out either to Kristen directly, um, myself, you can find me on Twitter at LH Maintenance, actually, which is now at Window Fix, doesn't matter, um, or Charlie, which is at Juicing Strong One. Um, it's not a horse, it's a pony. Uh, <laughs> Kristen, what are your thoughts regarding eating, chewing your protein versus adding a pea protein when juicing exclusively? The pea protein is horrendous. Will it significantly slow down the process that I have in mind when trying to reach my rebooting goals? Um, so Michelle, what you can do is try, just try a different protein. I mean, pea protein, a lot of people don't like, I would recommend uh, reboot with Joe has a pea protein that is much more, it's more easily uh, dissolvable in the juices. Um, and it also has biotin and vitamin D that's, uh, the reboot with Joe protein powder. Um, but if you don't like the protein, powder, the pea protein powder, hemp po protein powder is really great. Uh, Bob's red mill makes a good brand. Um, there's brown rice pro protein powder, Vega, Vega makes a great, um, brand. And then, you know, if you wanted to try like a whey protein powder, uh, there's, there's a, a variety of different ones. So if you don't like the pea protein exclusively, then just try a different one, see what works for you. Um, but I definitely would recommend to add a protein to your juices, especially if you're doing one long, a juice fast longer than 15 days. It's really important. We're going to lose weight, but we don't want to lose weight. We want to lose fat. Right. And so having some of that protein will help preserve the lean body mass. I love you. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> oh dear. You're amazing. I knew you'd be amazing. <laughs> well, this has been absolutely fantastic. I've been told to uh, yeah, this is so great. I've been told to share this video. So if people want to play this video, oh gosh, it's automatically playing. This is Charlie being Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way it says be with you shortly. <laughs> Look at my boys. They're so beautiful. So thank you so, awesome. so much. Okay, I'm stopping. You're amazing. You better come back. We want you back. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We we literally could sit here and chat for another hour, but as I said, I, I like to be respectful of everybody's time and keep them wanting more. Thank you, everybody, okay. for tuning in tonight. And um, we'll probably do something on Wednesday or Thursday night. But next week we have a special guest again. You want yes. to tell him who it is? Sarah, Sarah wrangled him in. Next week, we have Mr. Shane Whaley from Juicing Radio, who's going to be, he's going to be the interviewee, not yeah. the interviewer. Yeah, so, he's going to turn it around on us. You know he's going to turn no, it around not. on We're us. We're not letting him. No, no, no. I've, oh, I've dug up some really good dirt on him. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, Kristen, thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. It's been great Kristen. getting to know you. Namaste, my dear. Namaste. Everyone. Namaste. No, are we going to do it? Charlie, are we doing it? We're doing it. Go for it. You start. Never quit. Never give up. You got to say much love now, Kristen. I can't see you guys. Say much love. I don't know where my thing went. Say much love. love. <laughs> much love. Namaste. Oh, okay. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Shane Whaley from 